Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. As I'm sure you can see, I'm all alone today. Nick is not beside me. This is because unfortunately he has COVID-19 at the moment. So for the last, I'd say five days, we have been separated within our own apartment. He's quarantining in the primary suite and I have the rest of the condo to live in. As a result, we are going to be filming the portions of this video separately to one another, so you won't see us together, but hopefully we'll be back together soon and we'll be filming as normal again. In the meantime, I am having a cup of Moroccan mint tea, or at least my version of Moroccan mint tea, which is a green tea bag, some fresh mint, and instead of adding honey, I just added a teaspoon of coconut sugar. Maybe it's something you wanna try. I remember Nick and I absolutely loved it while we were in Morocco, and so we've tried to recreate it back home here. As I'm sure you can tell based on my spiel about Moroccan mint tea, Nick and I love food and we would consider ourselves foodies. While Nick and I do actually enjoy cooking together as a hobby, we like trying new recipes from various different international cuisines. The nature of our jobs means that we often don't have time or not so much time, but the energy to cook dinner at the end of a hard work day. We turn to going out for dinner or ordering takeout from various restaurants in the surrounding area as a result. We also find that we love to celebrate special occasions and catch up with our friends and family over food. So over the years, we've explored several different eaters in the area and we're really excited to share them with you. They range from, I'd say probably mid-priced to even very affordable and cheap. We do occasionally like going out to a more luxurious meal, but that is so rare for us. We also eat a mix of different things and some of the restaurants that we'll be talking about accommodate various dietary restrictions as well. Some are vegan, vegetarian, you can do dairy free, gluten free. So whatever you kind of like to eat or need to eat, there's definitely something for everybody. We may end up featuring one or two of our favorite restaurants in future videos, but there are just way too many of them for us to be able to go out to film at so we can make a video about each of them before we leave for our year long adventure around the world. It would just be too much money and too much time. So that's why we thought we would do this sit down video and just tell you about them all. Since we're in Canada, one of the first things that you're going to want to try is poutine, which is a beautiful combination of fries, cheese curds, gravy, and then whatever else you want to mix in there. It's the ultimate Canadian staple food, and in my opinion, one of the best drunk foods in the world. While the best poutine in the country can be found in its spiritual home of Quebec, the best poutine in Toronto used to be provided by a place called Poutinis. It was an amazing place that gave me the best possible introduction to this staple dish, but sadly due to COVID, it had to close down. Admittedly, that did mean I was a little bit lost for a while in terms of poutine options, but the great news is that after a little bit of discovery, we ended up finding this wonderful place called Nom Nom Noms, which has now picked up the mantle. This is a little stand that exists on Dundas and Bathurst, and it is so good. So good, in fact, that it was actually voted Toronto's best poutine by local Toronto blog, Blog TO. However, do bear in mind that it only provides lunchtime and afternoon service, so grabbing a late night or post drink poutine is a no go. Just a few stands down from that is an alternative that does offer late night snacks. It is our favorite place for gourmet grilled cheeses and it's called Stuffed. As I said, their main offering is a variety of different grilled cheeses or cheese toasties for the British out there. And then they also offer tater tot based dishes. The way I can describe it is it's a base of tater tot and then it has a variety of toppings to it. So the ones that I remember, I think we got the one that was Greek inspired, but they have various different other 
toppings that are inspired by international cuisines. Much to my dismay, we've only been there once. However, I've been going on about their grilled cheese and tater top ever since, trying to encourage all of our friends and family to indulge. So I think it's definitely worth a look if you're in the area. Next up, we're gonna talk about two of our favorite Italian offerings. The first that we're including in here is a place called Badiali's, which is on the corner of Argyle and Dovercourt. In order to tell you a little bit more about this place, I need to tell you a story. A few months ago, when I was getting a haircut, the barber and I were casually talking about really good places to go for food in the city. We then got to talking about pizza, and he recommended this place in particular. He then said to me, with his recommendation, that if I went there, tried the pizza, and it wasn't somewhere in my top three of best places to go in the city for pizza, I would get a free haircut. Needless to say, after having tried it, then I am still paying for my haircuts to this day. This little place on a corner of a quiet neighborhood intersection offers New York style pizza. The vodka pizza is my main favorite. And it frequently has people queuing out the door to get their fix of delicious food from this place. You can either get whole pizzas or buy the slice, and you can get that in person or by ordering online. However, if you do want a whole pizza, be sure to get in earlier in the day because once they fill up on online orders, they do not take any further requests and you will only be able to get pizza by the slice from there on in. The second is Tavs, which is located at College and Clinton. This is more of a sit-down restaurant with a very authentic and family-run feeling to it. Whenever we've gone there, we've been greeted by a nonna who seated us. This place definitely has Italian wait staff and chefs, and it has food that is from Italy directly. They're known for their pizza and gnocchi specifically, but I don't think you can go wrong with anything on their menu. We've been lucky enough to go a few times. One was for Nick's 30th birthday, and every time we go, we have an absolutely lovely experience. The other thing I should mention is that when we went, I ordered an espresso martini, and the espresso was still a little bit warm because of how freshly it had been made. Moving on from Italian food, let's talk sushi. While there is a chain of sushi restaurants in the city called Kibo, which we have been to several times, our favorite to get our delivery fix from is called Monkey Sushi. They also have several different locations dotted around the city, but thankfully one of those locations is about a 10-15 minute walk away from our house. They offer a wide variety of all things sushi rolls, sashimi, bento, noodles, cooked meals, among many other things, and the quality has always been great whenever we've gone to them. There is additional great news in that if you do order from here through delivery apps like Uber Eats, then they always offer two for one and exclusive deals in order to make that sushi experience that little bit cheaper. We're a huge fan of anything that has torched fish on top, so do keep an eye out for that. However, if you wanna go for an all you can eat sushi experience, then Sushi Place at Bloor and Kiel is the way to go. While their evening service is $35 per person, they do offer a lunchtime service that's $24 per person. While the lunchtime menu is technically more limited, you still get about 80% of the entire menu, so you're still getting a variety of offerings. This is a restaurant that Nick actually discovered when he was living nearby, and he was really excited to bring me to it when we started dating because it held such special memories for him. He told me that prior to COVID, the prices were much cheaper, which meant that when he was penny pinching, he would go every Saturday or Sunday. When he took me, the wait staff actually remembered him and greeted him really warmly, so it definitely holds a special place in his heart and stomach. If you like all of the constitute bits of sushi, but rather than having them in bite-sized rolls, you'd rather have them all just combined in one big bowl for you to eat, then maybe the Hawaiian dish poke is for you. Our favorite place in the city for this is called Ono's. 
The great thing about this place is not just the quality of the ingredients or the addition of their amazing sauces that help with the flavor, it's the fact that you can customize what goes into every single bowl. If you want mixed greens rather than rice, whether you want to switch out some ingredients for others, or you're just happy to get one of their pre-mixed bowls from the menu, the choice is yours. Each of their pre-made bowls is no more than $20 a time, and is always very filling. Another cuisine that generally offers food on the cheaper side is Thai. When Nick and I first started dating during the pandemic, we took a punt on a restaurant called Naguk Eatery Thai. I'm probably butchering the name, I'm really sorry. But they had two for one specials on their signature Pad Thai dishes. It was one of the best I had ever tried and Nick agreed with me. And considering the fact that we only paid $25 for both of them at the time, it was an absolute steal. If you want to go for a more upmarket option though, then Pai is for you. It is frequently rated among the best Thai restaurants in the entire city. And while in comparison to Naguk, it does cost that extra bit more, the quality of the food that you get is second to none. Therefore, if you're feeling like having Thai and want to go a little bit extra towards treating yourself, then this is the restaurant to go to. If this is anything like what we're going to get to experience when we actually go to Thailand later this year, then we are in for a real treat. Speaking of filling things on the cheaper side, and if you really fancy something a little bit more on the spice side, such as jerk chicken, then Arlwins is probably for you. Not only does this Caribbean place offer a bunch of great and delicious dishes, they also offer a two for one special on large chicken or pork with rice and peas for as little as $22 all in. Each of the meals in their own right is definitely filling, so if you're needing to save because you're trying to work to a budget, then places like this should be really where you're starting. It is also worth noting though that a lot of Caribbean places around this city do offer a similar kind of thing whereby it is great food but also very budget friendly, with some lunchtime specials costing as little as $6. Those of you who are of the British persuasion or just enjoy British cuisine will most likely want a slice of home if you choose to move here. The good news on that front is that there are a number of places that sell British food and drink items within their stores so you can get your fix. Equally, the breakfast and brunch options that you can find here are definitely good enough to satisfy your cravings. The thing we all yearn for though is a classic Sunday roast. And I'm happy to say that there are several places that do this on our side of the city. There's Liberty Commons and Hugs and Sarcasm, but the standout for us has always been Queen and Beaver. For the best part of Sunday afternoon, you can enjoy a delicious top side of beef, Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, and seasonal veg with gravy all for $33. Wash that down with a nice ale and sticky toffee pudding for dessert and you're golden. It's also worth noting that as part of their standard menu, they offer some delicious pies, so it may be worth trying those as well. If you are not interested in eating meat or fish though, then there are a plethora of really good restaurants here for you too. While we have been lucky to have sampled several over the course of the pandemic, our absolute favorites have been Hogtown Vegan, Look out for their unchicken Caesar wrap and Satan steak plates and Hello123. We went to Hello123 earlier this year and we sat down to some of the most delicious food that we have had in some time. I had a vegan lasagna which included arguably the best tomato based pasta sauce I've ever had. Rachel had sweet potato noodles in a pesto sauce which she said is one of the best meals that she's ever had and then we both shared a vegan mocha cheesecake for dessert which was absolutely heavenly. We cannot rate this place highly enough. But what if you just want to skip straight to dessert? There are a number of places in Toronto that specialize in a certain type of dessert and our favorite is those that specialize in cookies. While Craig's Cookies is a standout for a number of people, our number one pick for cookies in the city is called the Night Baker. The premise is basically the same. You order a box of cookies in a variety of different flavors, but where the Night Baker stands out is that they push the boundaries in terms of the flavors that they offer. 
Some of them may seem a little bit outlandish and strange, but we promise they are 100% worth a go. I really love the pistachio cookie, which is pistachio, matcha, and white chocolate. I also like the ube cookie, which is an ube cheesecake cookie filled with ube jam. And for those of you that don't know, ube is just purple yam. They also offer many of the classic cookies and are regularly changing their selection. With that, if you find yourself after something sweet, the Night Baker is the way to go. And now you know why we go to the gym a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the unconventional video. Please continue to like and subscribe to our channel. And until the next time, take care. And keep smiling. A few months ago, when I got a hack and when I was getting. But sadly, due to COVID, it has to. If you fancy more of a Caribbean. Buddy. We got to move. No, buddy. Dude, time to go. You want to share? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Dante? Dante, hello, focus. Can you do high five? Good boy! You did it for the camera! Good boy! You're so smart. So smart. You're keeping me company while Nick's away? I know. Okay, time to go. Dante, come here. Hey, come sit here. Buddy. Okay, time to move. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Nick and I first started dating during the pandemic. We took a punt on a Thai restaurant called Nick. <laughs> As with most things, prices have now gone up for their two-for-one deals. Mm. Part of Sunday afternoon. For the best part of Sunday afternoon, you can enjoy a top side of <laughs> roasted potatoes. <laughs> there are a number in. There are. The premise is basically the same. You order a box of cookies. No. <laughs> the premise is basically the same. You order a box of cookies in a. <laughs> you order a box of cookies in various different flavors. Cookies in various different flavors. You order a box of cookies in various different flavors. The premise is basically the same. You order a box of cookies in a variety. Why can't I say this? Oh. <gasps>